ശ്രീ കൃഷ്ണ ശ്രീ കൃഷ്ണ ശ്രീ കൃഷ്ണ ശ്രീ കൃഷ്ണ ഗുരുർബ്രഹ്മാ ഗുരുർവിഷ്ണു ഗുരുർദേവോ മഹേശ്വര ഗുരു സാക്ഷാ പരബ്രഹ്മ തസ്മൈ ശ്രീ ഗുരവേ നമ തസ്മൈ ശ്രീ ഗുരവേ നമ when our vision is defective our perceptions cannot be correct so when we take our life to be an event between birth on one side and the death of the body on other side and if we imagine this is all that life is we are creating a situation wherein other than sufferings there cannot be anything it is something like this if you take a small room let us take this room and in this room if there is some incense being burned there will be fragrance everywhere or if there is some dead rat rotting somewhere so there will be a stink everywhere in this room because it is limited now if you come out of the room and go in the total space whether you burn all the perfumes at a time or you have the maximum rotting as it is possible and then see what happens to the total space nothing happens so whenever we are focusing attention on a very limited area we cannot see the beauty of this world another example everything has to be seen from a proper distance like you know this our camera man he is keeping the camera fix but by the zooming he is adjusting the distance and when the distance is properly adjusted you see the things perfectly in the same manner when we look at the events and the things in our life and if we do not know the importance and the technique by which we can adjust our focal length while looking at the life we will always see something which is very ugly suppose you see some art exhibition it is going on in that nehru stadium somewhere so <clears throat> there are pictures drawn by various artists and if you see that picture from a very close distance you can see nothing but ugliness if you see from such a long distance you can see nothing so if you want to see the beauty of that particular object or a painting you must know the proper distance from where to look at the things if this principle is clear now bring this principle in our life when we take any event of our life like in this example arjuna's event that this is a terrible war that i have to face so whenever we take any event of our life and look at it from a wrong distance all that is not there will be surfacing and this is how all the problems of our life are created so what is to be done look at the world from a proper distance look at the world with a proper knowledge two things so what is our life as we understand scientifically today our life is from the birth till the death the science science operates and beyond that the science does not proceed 
and all that happens in our life is not because of anything in this life, but according to our scriptures, it is a continuum from the past. Now when this principle is understood, many of the problems of life, psychological problem will be solved. Which are the problems? First problem. All of us blame others for our failures. This is the scientific way of living. So if the wife is there, the cause of her misery cannot be anything but the husband. If the husband is there, the cause of the misery cannot be anything but the wife. And this is all that they can think of, cause, effect, cause, effect. Now if we understand that there are people with riches and poverty, and yet we are surprised to see how come their life is so different. So only one thing can answer this problem. What is the reason of variation after birth in this world? If we are all the children of the same God, which God will want that his one child should be very smart, intelligent and good and the other child should be a terrorist, which God will want? Nobody will want. And yet we see the things. So what is that because of which such a great variation comes? And here comes the principle of our accumulated tendencies from the past life that we inherit in the present life. And that is what makes all the difference. Therefore, your genetic characters, the color of your eyes, if your parents have the color of the eyes, you know, like the Europeans, green and blue and yellow and uh, red eyes, you will get the same kinds of eyes. And then that is all. It has nothing to do with the fulfillment of your life. Then what is that which is most important? It is the principle of what we cannot account for it is called as fate. What is fate? Fate is that which does not fall in the purview of cause and effect. See? Therefore, Arjuna is told by the teacher, Krishna, he says, Arjun, do you know why you are so much suffering in this simple situation of life? Because you do not have the proper understanding. What is the proper understanding? First, such a situation is not new. This has always happened. See, we all have appeared in our school examinations. Not one. Some people have made their foundation strong. <laughs> Is it it? So, when our children are appearing for the examination, how serious, as if this is the first time examinations are being conducted. I remember one child talking to her mother. Mother was doctor, medical professional. And she came from the school and she said, Mommy, do you know? What is that, beta? Do you know what is human body? Recently learned one word. Tell me what it is. Now she is a medical graduate. She said, she told, see, look here, there are many systems. Then anatomy, physiology, and this is... So the child was looking at the mother with a pathetic look. Mom, what dad says about you is true. We have no masala. Why, what happened? This is not, no, this is not body. Who told you? Okay, but you tell what is the body. Now the child tells the wisdom. Do you know what is the body? It has got a head. It has got limbs. It has got trunk. Did you tell that? See? So any situation that comes in our life, we imagine this is the first time the things are happening in this world. In this world there is nothing new. No disease is new, no doctor is new. <laughs> this has always been happening. Then what happens? We get identified with that event with a microscopic vision. 
that which has to be seen with the open eyes, if you start using macroscope, you see those things which are not required to be seen. See? This is what Arjuna is told. Arjun, don't become so serious in life. Look here, you and me are born so many times. I know all that. You don't know. And therefore you imagine, if this happens, what is going to happen? Nothing is going to happen. See? This is one principle if you follow in life, you will never get disturbed. Today I had to go somewhere for inauguration of some Bhagavad Sapta on the way. And we were going round and round because this is road closed, that road closed. There is a digging and there is a undigging, something going on. So in that all Jamela, when we came out, it was getting late. So Sham said, Swamiji, today will be late. I said, don't worry. How does it matter? If I reach there on time, do you think people listen? <laughs> and if I am late by five minutes, do you think anybody is going to miss anything? Then relax. Once you take this view of life, Nothing will disturb you. And this is the secret of living happily. Otherwise, we become so excited, so excited. Many places when we go for food or some program, what they are supposed to, they will never do it. Because of that excitement. Excitement is when you involve with something beyond requirement, you get excited. So remain cool. Take life in the same stride and see the beauty. So, Bahuni me vetitani janmani tavacharjuna tanyam vetta sarvani veda sarvani natvam vetta parantapa. Because I know I am not worried. Uh, you imagine, suppose in this war this thing happened, so what? So many times it has happened. There is nothing new in this world. Neither the events, nor the words, neither the questions, nor the answers. This has been again and again mechanically repeated existence. And yet we get so enchanted by this. Because we do not have the proper vision. Now, Bhagwan says about himself. Do you know, I tell about me. And the same story is about you. If you understand my story as your story, you will change your life. Now Bhagavan tells his story. And here is one of the most important doctrine of um, communication of the reality to the student. And this is called as the principle of avatar, when the God descends in this world. These are the most popular verses of Gita. Sixth verse. Ajopi san navyayatma bhuta nami shwaropi san prakrutim swamadhishthaya sambhavami atma mayaya yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutthanama dharmasya tadatmanam srijamyam paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya jadushkrutam Dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. In these three verses, the teacher gives the following principles. First, what is the essence of God coming to the earth? First principle. About this, I was reading a story told by our Swami Khandanji Maharaj. He said, you know, once it so happened, Virbal was asked a question by Akbar. Uh, Birbal, in you Hindu people, why every time God has to come? Doesn't he have any person who can come and finish the job and go back? Why God has to come for every small little thing? So, Birbal said, I'll reply at the right time, don't worry. Then he planned a very nice picnic and he made a uh, wax model of the son of this uh, Akbar. And they went. And he told that uh, Aya, when we go, just push that child as if it has fallen. And he was so perfectly made as if he is a living child. 
and in the next boat and here this uh, king was going and the moment the king saw the child has fallen in the water immediately he himself jumped into it and tried to save and found it was only a wax model naturally he got so angry he said don't get angry this is the reply to your question when your child fell in the water were not any other people available to save the child why did you jump in the same manner the god comes himself in this world it is not that he is short of people so what is the essence of the god's descent on this in this world first ajaha api san avyatma api bhutanam ishwaraha api three things the other day i told you when a person in us asked me this question we don't believe in the rebirth then how can you communicate to us can you communicate without the rebirth being accepted by us i said don't worry rebirth is not required even birth is not required ajaha api unborn although so although i am unborn avyayatma and i have never undergone any modification be very very attentive i am unborn i have undergone no modification and bhutanam ishvaro pisan and i am the controller ruler of everything three things and yet prakrutim swam adhishthaya i keep my powers under my control and i descend with freedom in this world the difference is when the jailer goes to the jail and when the prisoner the criminal goes to the jail what is the difference one is going out of freedom other is going out of compulsion the lord descends in this world with this understanding this is the essence i'll explain in more detail first second thing is what is the purpose of coming in this world purpose is yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati whenever whenever the dharma the righteousness falls now here is another very important principle if ganga ji becomes impure by taking bath by the sinners it is not a ganga ji isn't it so dharma righteousness is that which can never fall and yet the lord says yada yada dharmasya glanir bhavati means what this is the second uh, thing the purpose of descending of the lord in this world now the third thing paritranaay sadhunam vinashaay cha duskrutam what is the thing that is uh, established after the purpose of coming in this world is done paritranaay sadhunam vinashaay cha duskrutam for the uh, protection of the good people and the destruction of the bad people in this manner dharma samsthapana arthay for the reestablishment of the righteousness sambhavami yuge yuge i descend every moment in this world if you remember yesterday i told you three principles every verse has got three meanings one is the gross meaning material meaning second is the subjective understanding and the third is the divine principle as manifested in the totality unless our understanding is complete with reference to the matter with reference to the totality and with reference to individuality our understanding will remain incomplete so first we take the divine meaning when the lord says ajopi sannavyatma bhutanam ishwaropi san those who have read bhagavad they know we uh, know about bhagwan krishna from where what is the source of knowledge mahabharat and bhagavad so when it is said the lord has appeared descended and it is very clearly mentioned bhagwan shri krishna appeared before his mother and father right at the time of birth 
of the age of eight years and fully decorated with all the clothes and everything that he had. This birth is not possible according to science. And then we say, it is all humbug. One person told me this. He said, Swamiji, I doubt very much whether Bhagwan Krishna existed or not. I said, uh, I also doubt whether you have something here or not. He said, how come? I said, on what ground you said he did not exist? It is not possible. I said, look here, it is not possible for you to understand. Say this thing, make a sentence complete. What is not possible to us to understand how this can happen? And as I told you yesterday, when the science is not able to explain something, we say it is humbug. See? Therefore, if you take in the right spirit, our scriptures very clearly tell that he appeared with all the uh, complete form of the age of eight. And then he tells his parents that do the things following way. And that is how he was able to manage everything. And he himself has decided the total destruction of everything. This can be done only by the one who has the supreme authority. Another most important thing. When the Lord, now I will tell you from the subjective point of view. Ajaha api. Now you analyze your own experience, don't believe. Do we have the experience of our birth? Nobody has. Because it is not possible. We only believe somebody told that you are born. So we say, unless I experience, unless I know myself, I will not believe. So do we have the experience of birth? No. And yet we say that I am born. So what is born? He is not you. Second thing. We all have the experience that we are not growing. It is the people who inform us now and then. Dadaji, now you should not do too much of work. And then this Dadaji thinks, No, but I have not become old. I am still young. Because nobody has the experience of having grown and become old. That does not fall in the purview. So when the Lord is telling here, Ajaha api, Avyayatma api, He is talking about every one of us. If you recognize that principle, which was never born, nor it has undergone any change, if that you are, then what will be your attitude towards the body? Everybody is born, everybody grows first vertically, then horizontally, then becomes old, then the diseases come and one day the body dies. It is a common biography of everybody. What is great about it? And suppose you live long, what next? This is one very vital question. Science doesn't reply this question. Suppose somebody lives for 20 years, somebody lives for 100 years, somebody lives for 120. Vijay, Konza Tendulkar. So, what next? Suppose you live for 130, 40, 200 years. In our uh, Maharashtra, there was a great uh, yogi, Changdev Maharaj. By the yogi technique, he lived for 1400 years. Imagine. So when he lived for 1400 years, that time comes 100 years before Christ. So when he lived for 1400 years, ultimately what happened to him? He has to discard the body. And that which is to be ultimately discarded, all the time holding on to that, 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 that. What next? See? Therefore, Focus attention on that principle which is supporting all the changes. And once your attention is on that, 
good is supporting all the changes you will never be suffering in life science has never been able to remove the suffering it is only adding day by day because the contentment and the cheer is not in the outer world but it is the quality of your own being sa ajopi san avyayatma our own experience now you take from the gross body point of view this body is made out of five great elements this is from the material point of view body is made out of five element when the body dies what happens nothing happens the five elements which were come uh, brought together and they took a particular form those five elements start disintegrating and they go back our physics tells when a candle burns nothing is lost matter is never created and never it is destroyed it is all the same and therefore when a bulb is fused neither the electricity is lost nor the principle of expression of light electricity as light that is lost this is the eternal game of consciousness expressing is going on and on and on if you focus attention to that you will live in this very world and yet you will not suffer in life therefore ajopi sannavya atma bhutanam ishvaropi sat how can we do that prakrutin swam adhisthaya sambhavami atmamayaya only one thing have perfect control on your senses on your organs of action on your mind on your thinking see how important it is licentiousness is the definition of prosperity self control and the perfect uh, mastery over our self is the lifestyle of the spiritual masters becoming slaves is taught by the science therefore when we are talking about scientific lifestyle it is in fact unscientific it is not scientific scientific lifestyle can be when you discover freedom in life whether the sense objects are for me or i am their slave whether the body is meant for me to work through or am i the slave of this body whether the mind should dance to my tune or i should dance to the tune of the mind think the day you discover this prakrutim swam adishthay you know what happens today all our energy is wasted discharge only in indulgence and as a result by the time the day is over oh, i am so tired i am so tired i am frustrated dejected on the contrary if you lead a life of self control and work dynamically in this world you will see all the great masters it doesn't matter their body age but the amount of contribution they have made to the society is unparalleled so prakrutim swam adhisthaya sambhavami atmamayaya then for such a person like the lord himself the senses the mind the prakruti is no more an enslaving phenomena but it is kept under total control now the question is why does the lord come down in this world now please understand this is a very very subtle point when we talk of righteousness like this is a flower in this manner righteousness is not an object when this is a mic an object in this manner dharma or religion or the principles of living dignified life they are not objects another example suppose you have uh, some problem you have to sort out legally will you go with your problem in the law library and stand before all the books and tell your problem no all that knowledge of the law has to be 
lifted from the book, kept in the brain by the advocate, and then only that law knowledge becomes functional. If this principle is understood, in the same manner, be very attentive. Uh, ahimsa, Satya, Asteya, Brahmacharya, Aparigraha, Santosha, Tapa, Swadhyaya, Ishvara, Pradidhana. All these positive attributes of living life, which are these? Non-injury, truthfulness, then uh, non-covetousness, living with everybody cheerfully and happily. Where do these things exist? They exist in our mind. Be very, very attentive. I am repeating it again and again. Now, those people who are the custodians of this dharma or the righteous lifestyle, if they lose faith in the very principle of righteousness, what will happen? They will say that righteousness has never helped anybody and therefore corruption is the order of the day. That is what is happening today. See? Our Shastra tells us for the protection of a family, if one person is to be sacrificed, it is worth. If for the protection of a village, if a family has to be sacrificed, it is worth. If for the protection of the, let us say, the whole state, if one whole village or town has to be wiped out, it is worth. Importance is to be given to the totality and not the individuality. But today's scientific progress talks about individual is more important and totality is not important. See the difference. And when you talk about dharma, in dharma, totality is more important and not individuality. For example, the traffic rules which are made. Are the traffic rules made keeping in view one particular individual? No. The totality of the traffic. In the same manner, when all the people are living in this world, what should be the code of conduct? What should be the laws which should operate? for their coexistence, those laws are called as dharma. And when selfishness and individual demands become more powerful than the totality, then adharma overpowers. And when adharma overpowers, then all those people who are the custodians of the dharma, if they lose faith, then we come to this question. Once it happened, I was in our uh, Vipul, Maharashtri's place, and some satsang was going on. And one lady, I don't remember her name, but she came from a very rich and very good family, and uh, even politically oriented rich family. So she asked a question, Swamiji, in this world we see bad people, corrupt people, Criminals are prosperous. And good people, nice people, they suffer in this world. What is the reason? So I ask her a question. Because my style is, Har sawal ka jawab hi sawal ho. Ek sawal tum karo, ek sawal hum marenge. So I ask her a question. I said, Amma, you are rich, you are prosperous. Are you ready to accept that you are cheat, you are corrupt? No, 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 not, I don't mean that. See, now understand, those who are really good people, they never complain, they never criticize. Dharma teaches us that. And therefore, when the teacher says, Dharma se glani yada yada bhavati, whenever the importance of the great values falls from the hearts of those who are supposed to honor them, then there is a chaos in the society. 
See how important it is. Earlier, see the other day, I went somewhere and they asked me one question. So many, what is the reason Indians were so united before independence, now there is such a chaos everywhere. I said, you know, Indians have got many qualities. One quality I tell you. Individually they are ingenious. Collectively they are calamity. And four Indians can walk together in the same direction for the same purpose only when they have got a dead body on their shoulder. <laughs> Not otherwise. I said, look here. Do you know why? Because before independence, there were leaders who were able to inspire and guide the masses. Today, you raise your head and want to look at a leader in our country. Don't say there are no leaders. Everybody is a leader. <laughs> that is the problem. There are no followers. And everybody wants his own way to be done. And the result is selfishness and individuality becomes more important. Totality becomes secondary. And this is where is the fall of Dharma. Now see what is happening in our country. Within the country, my Karnataka and your Tamil Nadu and that poor Krishna what is her fault? Isn't it? Both of them are fighting because this is my state, that is your state. As long as this kind of principle becomes more important, we are falling away from the dharma. Therefore the Lord says, Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata. Please remember, if the eternal principles of righteousness, if they are honored by us, then we will not talk the language of rights, but we will live the philosophy of duties. The day we take it, dharma will be re-established. So, yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati maharata abhyutthanam dharmasya tadatmanam sujamyam I manifest myself when this condition comes. Now, how this is manifestation takes place? One, we have seen Bhagavan Krishna came. Second, in our own life. I am more interested in the subjective understanding. See, every one of us, one day or the other, sits quiet and thinks. I have been running, running, doing so many things. What did I really achieve in my life? Parikshalokan karmachitan brahmanaha nirvedamayat You sit quiet. I have done this, I have done this, I have done that, I have done that. What next? The loneliness creeps in the mind. One start constantly feeling fear. One person the other day came. He said, Swamiji, I have no problem except one problem. And the problem is fear of death. How to get out of that fear of death? I said, very simple. What is that? Die. Janjat khatam. As long as you are alive, you will have fear of death. The only way is die yourself, but know how to die. If you are an Australian, you know. Isn't it? Australians, when they say, uh, when did you come? You ask them. They say, to die. So we have to tell, we are not asking the purpose. We are asking when you come. So to die means today. So we must know how to die. And the real death is that death after which all fear of your life disappears. Fearlessness is the insignia of wisdom. Those who are uh, cowards, fearful, they have no wisdom along with them. So if this problem comes fear, 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 this fear can be removed only by one technique. Discover your correct identity. 
with the wrong identity alone there is a fear. Therefore, when it is said, Abhyutthanama dharmasya tadatmanam srujamyam. Then the third stage, who are the custodians of the righteousness? The other day somebody asked me, Swamiji, when your Krishna is going to take avatar? I said, Why, what is the hurry? Do you think that there is less bad thing in this world? Is it not the right time? There cannot be bad time than today in this world. He must descend. I said, who told you today is the bad time? No, no, it was never earlier. Is it? Yes. Okay. How do you know it will not be later? It cannot be. It is so bad today. Agreed. Third thing. Were you in the past? Were you in the... Will be you in the future? No. You are only today. Isn't it? So do you know what is the reason there is a chaos in this world? It is you. You change. So paritranaya sadhuna. Please remember, God doesn't descend to destroy the wicked. He descends for the upliftment of those great seekers who are seeking the truth. That is the purpose. It is something like, we keep the cow for milk. Gober gas is a byproduct. In the same manner, the Lord descends when the sadhu, santa, they are to be protected. So if we want the Lord to come, we all have to become good. Then he will come down. Don't expect he comes here to give a jadu. No. So paritrana is sadhu nam. This is the first purpose. And therefore, whenever good people come together, there is a totally different atmosphere. There is a totally different charge experience. That is the descent of the divinity. So, paritranaya sadhunam vinashayate duskritam. And in the process, the negativity is removed from our mind. And uh, dharma samsthapana arthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Yuge yuge, don't translate like this. In uh, Satya Yuga, he came as a Varaha avatar. Then in the Treta Yuga, he came as a Rama avatar. Then in the Dwapar Yuga, he came as the Krishna avatar. And in Kali Yuga, he came as me. <laughs> no. Yuge, Yuge means every moment. Every moment. And you see how it descends. Be very attentive. Whenever, whenever we are doing something wrong, every one of us knows, I am doing this thing wrong. And from inside, you get a tickling. Hey, don't do that. Shut up. We switch off our mobile. And that poor fellow is trying again and again. Therefore, your shankha is a mobile. So he again and again tells us. But he gets the message. The number that you had dial is out of reach. He is not ready to listen. See? So yuge yuge means every sensible person whenever he is leading his life, when he is doing something wrong for the first time, his own conscience, what they call as inner voice, is telling you don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Then we do it. Under the pressure of our own uh, obstinate desires. We do it and we go through. And we become little more courageous. Second time it happens, again we do it. Third time we become expert. And thereafter, that becomes our swabhav. That becomes our nature. So, yuge yuge means, if you are really watching within, whenever you are interacting outside, find out what is happening inside. There was one boy who went to other country for studies. So, he went to his mother. Mom, give me some advice. She said, Beta, you are educated, I am illiterate, what can I tell you? Go to my guru. So he went to his mother's guru and told. Guru said, okay, I will tell you. 
try if you can before doing anything during doing anything and after having done something if you do not fall from your self respect in your own eyes you are walking the right path see how simple it is sambhavami yuge yuge every moment he is watching us nay any thought which comes in our mind first it is recorded recognized by him and then we know that in you know bhagavad mahapuran a story comes there the dialogue comes how the god decides whether after that this fellow should go to hell or heaven so there they say in our body behind every organ there is a principle of divinity because of which everything is functioning in the eyes the sun is sitting therefore the vision is in the ear there is digdevata therefore the ears are able to hear in the nose there are ashwini kumaras therefore nose is able to smell in the rasana the tasting organ there is varun devata therefore we are able to taste in this manner all our body is permeated by different divine principles according to the functional differences when anything that is happening is immediately punched and when the body is discarded when the soul jiva goes to the you go and say no 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 i have not done this thing i know i am very nice i don't know why you are sending me to hell so do you think the lord will listen to our bluffs or he will listen to his uh, uh, cbi inquiry think the moment be very attentive the moment you become aware that the divine principle he is eternally watching every action of yours you can never go the wrong way think take one or two examples when you start going to college and you are from our indian culture and therefore in our culture we respect elders so when i go to college i have to smoke because other, otherwise i become outdated so i want to smoke and then i start smoking and when i am smoking suddenly from nowhere the dad comes immediately that cigarette may be very expensive immediately it goes and it is thrown and we put our shoe on that dad i never expected you to come here i have lost my cigarette the second portion is inside the other portion is outside now why we do that because we have become aware of someone of whom we have fear and respect we will not do the wrong things now apply the principle in our life yuge yuge every moment whatever you are doing or not doing it is being monitored by the divine principle the moment you become aware of this your life is automatically channelize in a creative manner this is the meaning of arrival of the god in our life so dharma samsthapana arthaya sambhavami yuge yuge such a person will automatically start leading a life of righteousness now having told about his story now the teacher says in the ninth verse जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एवं यो वेति तत्वत त्यक्वा देहम पुनर्जन्म नैति मामेति सोर्जुन भगवान ने सेड दिस इज माय प्रिंसिपल ऑफ अराइवल इन दिस वर्ल्ड नाउ ही हु अंडरस्टैंड दिस टू थिंग्स माय बर्थ एंड माय एक्शंस आर डिवाइन व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अ डिवाइन एक्शन एंड अ नॉन डिवाइन एक्शन सी i look at somebody 
so that body is divine creation the eyes by which i am looking that is divine creation the vision in the eyes is divine creation and as a result i have seen somebody is a divine creation up to here we are in the divine kingdom but we don't do that we don't stop there after having seen somebody how nice he is or she is i think if i had to marry only to him or her and if i cannot marry what is life without wife and then start growing the beard that is why baba ji is a guru beard because they cannot get married <laughs> one day one person asked me this question all kinds of questions is there any need why you baba ji grow beard because we couldn't get married so out of frustration it has grown now when this young boy or a girl has seen a uh, boy or a girl up to that it was a divine phenomena going on after that our projections our interactions our reactions our achievement our failure that is the creation of ours so janma karma che me divyam what is the divinity of the birth and the action of the lord please understand birth if we are compelled to do something we suffer in life if you do something out of your own choice you enjoy isn't it these in summer days you must have seen when there are holidays you tell your son hey come on go and get something some cold drink because some guests have come we have nothing in our house go and get it immediately the child it is so hot i don't want to go i know and another two minutes his friend comes hey chalo let's play cricket immediately the sun disappears the heat disappears because you are interested to do that see whenever you suffer understand you are living under compulsion whenever you are enjoying your life understand you are not living under any compulsion it is your free choice see i was in states in the university i think i told you this and after my lecture was over i spoke their vedantic view of life and you know american students terrible when you look at them it is difficult to keep on looking at them you can't stop laughing if you laugh it is bad one girl i saw i still remember vividly these are the things worth remembering of usa one girl she had you no know, white girl put a line over here this side completely shaven this said all the hair and she is sitting in front of me for listening to vedantic view of life with a coke in the hand and her legs with the shoes and a skirt on the table now you tell me how much be my sadhana <laughs> now this was the scenario and you know there the lecture hall is very peculiar the teacher is in the well and all the students are high up therefore is called as a well so all the students look down upon the teacher and the teacher has to look up to the students so after my talk was over one one and a half hour and uh, i went to the professor's room he said uh, excuse me i am surprised to see that all the students sat through because when i teach nobody remains there after 5 minutes they walk away and i get every day holiday how come they have listened to you for one and a half hour this has never happened in this university since the day i joined i am in this university for last 30 years what is the trick you played 
I said, I do not know you are the students. He said, no, I don't dare talk to them. I said, there could be one reason. The reason is, I did not talk under compulsion. And what I talk, I am fully convinced of it. I am not telling because of anything. See the difference. When you lead your life with that conviction and total freedom, there is a joy in life. Now, for example, this very hall. All those of you who have come on your own, they are enjoying. And those who were tied down and brought for them, every no, no, no. Why these people are laughing? What is there to laugh? See? This happens because there is no freedom under compulsion you are living. This is the beauty, Bhagwan says. Janma karma chame divyam. Don't live in this world under the compulsion of frustration. Live totally, cheerfully, happily. How to live that? Not with the licentiousness, but with the dignity of a human being. And what is the dignity of a human being? Dignity of human being is lead a life of social awareness. Without becoming an animal. If this is understood, you will see, we will really make a lot of difference in our life. So, Janma Karma Chame Divyam, the divinity is this, that we allow the divine principle to express through us. See, there are two ways of understanding this. One is, the one which I explained you, the second is, Karma or action. Whatever we do, we do for what? We do for getting happiness out of this world. So, what you are doing? You are accepting at this moment you are not happy. After you do that, then you will be happy. So, what you have done? You have postponed your own happiness. But those who postpone their happiness, they can never be happy. Now the other way. If every action is an expression of the inherent joy, what will happen? At the time of doing the action, you will discover happiness. He who is able to experience happiness at the time of performance of the action, he can never, never, never be miserable. See how important it is. And if this principle is applied everywhere, whether you are cooking, whether you are eating, whether you are talking, whether you are listening, whether you are sleeping, Sleep as an expression of joy, nicely, full of sound. Isn't it? Those people who have this problem of, uh, uh, who have got the nuisance value. <laughs> Those who create sound for others when they sleep. For them a solution. Solution is, get a cricket ball and tie that cricket ball with a dupatta or your angavastra on the back side. Put it in that and tie it like this. And then go to sleep. What will happen, you know? You cannot come on the back. The moment you come in the back, oh, you turn to the left or to the right. The moment you turn to the left or right, you stop snoring. But Swamiji, suppose somebody snores even on the left and the right, tie two more balls. <laughs> <laughs> 
वंस यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस प्रिंसिपल लेट एवरीथिंग बी एन एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ इनर एंड जॉय जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम रिमेम्बर वेन एवर यू आर मिजरेबल यू हैव कम डाउन टू द लेवल ऑफ माइंड वेन एवर यू आर हैप्पी यू हैव ट्रांसेंडेड द लिमिटेशन ऑफ माइंड एंड यू आर लिविंग एट द लेवल ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस सी जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एंड वॉट इज द जन्म द बर्थ वी आर ऑल बॉर्न out of the compulsion we have no choice because the result is going to be received by you but the lord descends in this world not out of the result of any action he comes in this world with the love compassion and the freedom of entry in this world and exit from the world and therefore when he left the world he was not miserable how important it is so janma karma cha me divyam evam yo veti tatvatah now what is the secret what is the essence of this birth and the action of the lord first he said i am unborn so i am unborn means what i do the natak of taking birth be very attentive on the cinema screen or on the stage when the actor and actresses are acting so one actress comes and she tells to the actor honey although you are honey sticky sticky still i love you and then the actor comes and he said chewing gum i also love you now when these two dialogues are said by these two actor and actresses on the stage both of them know i am born as a lover i am born as a beloved only for some time it is just a natak not real if you understand this come now i am coming and telling you and giving you pravachan it is a natak go further you are coming and listening with all attentiveness i know it is a natak have we really heard all through so many years so many mahatmas have come and gone if we have really heard we would have totally been a changed person but we are a challenge to the mahatmas mahatmas come on apan ko sudhar ke dikhao See, Bhagwan's birth is that is why you know there is only one principle by which all the uh, what do you call riddles of life can be explained. Only one principle, and that is the principle that the world is the sport of the Lord, Krishna Lila or Rama Lila. When you take your life as a sport, what will happen? in this everything is just an acting and when you start acting in life you get money you get name you get fame if you start reacting in life you get nothing kick support you get see all the actors and actresses they are called as actors not reactors and we in our life constantly react husband reacts with the wife wife with the husband parents with the children children with the parents and there is nothing but a constant reactor a big turbine is moving see therefore janma karma chame divyam means take life lightly in the light of wisdom don't become unnecessarily serious See, the other day one girl came and there are some problem in her life and uh, she has to separate from the husband so she came swami ji what sin i have done i said see i don't keep account i don't have your sin account you want a solution or a problem i have got both 
if you want problem, I will create confusion to such an extent that throughout life you will suffer. If you want a solution, take from me. What is that? I said, you are a computer engineer. Yes, Swamiji. I said, take the cursor. It is called as cursor. Curse. So, take the cursor with the mouse and delete that fellow with one click. Don't ask any question thereafter. And you quit before he tells you to leave. And lead a life of dignity. Don't lead a second class life in this world. But what then people will say? I said, kick the world. Don't bother about the world. World will say something or the other. Kuch to log kahenge. See? I really love that song. Tu kon hai? Tera naam hai kya? Sita bhi yahan badnaam hui. What do you think, what people will say? People have got better things to do. <laughs> Don't think the world is watching along you, see what you are doing, what you are doing. Therefore, here the teacher says, Janma karma ce divyam yo veti tatvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naiti maameti yusorjuna. Means what? Once he has reason about the body identification, and merge himself with the totality, he thereafter never leads a life of selfishness. I am not taking you to Moksha and the Heaven and the Vaikuntha. If you want to go to Vaikuntha, there is a society <laughs> in Ville Parle. In that society, all the Vaikuntha Vasi live. I am not taking you there. I always remember whenever this Vaikuntha and things come, my visit to Kailash. One man was very miserable, one Babaji. Babajis are normally miserable. Because they could not get married, got frustrated, became Babaji. They are also failure. Everywhere failed. One person I met, a young boy, he came with his brother. Oh, frustrated Swamiji, in my life I lost everything. I am such a terrible failure. I have wanted to commit suicide, I did it. I said, there also you failed. At least there you should have been successful. Now I tell you the technique. So when I went to that Kailash, that uh, one Babaji I met, started, look, he looked at me, started crying. I said, am I that bad? That you stand, no, no, Swami Ji, aapke darshan se bada dhanya ho gaya, bhi haso ro kyu rahe ho? And then he told me, I could not go for the Pradakshina, so my life is wasted. I said, don't worry, I will come back after Pradakshina and give you this whole Punya. And you carry the load of Punya. I relax and go back. I did that. And that time while coming, I asked him, uh, by the way, Babaji, uh, what is your name? Samiji, is Dehako Vaikuntha Das Kaiti. The moment is Vaikuntha Das, I could not stop laughing, I ran. And those who are with me say, Samiji, why are you laughing? I say, you don't understand jokes, what can I do? <laughs> and jokes cannot be explained. Those who want that joke should be explained, they belong to a different category. <laughs> Swami, please tell what is the joke. I said, see the tragedy. He is Vaikuntha Das. If he dies in Kailash, he won't get admission. <laughs> because the Chaukija, what is your name? Vaikuntha Das. Kyu hai? Bhaag yaha se Vaikuntha, Vaikuntha. Ye Shivji ka sthaan hai, Kailash. And if he dies here, and afterwards he goes to Vaikuntha, he will ask, where did you die? Kailash. Why did you come here? Go there. So he will be neither here nor there. See the tragedy. Therefore, Tyaktva deham punar janma naiti maameti sorjuna means what? Once you rise above this wretched body identification, your vision expands. In that, there is none your enemy, none your friend. 
and when you are able to live in this world without creating friends and enemies then alone you are living otherwise you are dead so tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mametu sorjuna after having said this then the question is how these people can come to me the teacher gives gives a technique in the 10th verse he says vitaraga bhaya krodhaha manmaya maam upashritaha bahavaha jnan tapasa puta mad bhav magata now the first thing bahavaha many many have come to me don't imagine the attainment of blissful experience in this world while living is a monopoly of the baba ji is no every one of us whether married or unmarried or unfortunately married whatever may be the reason every one of us is qualified to discover this inherent bliss bahava don't imagine no 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 in the seventh chapter bhagwan will say मनुष्याणाम शस्त्रेशु कश्चिद यदति सिद्धे यततां अविसिद्धानां कश्चिन माम वेति तत्वतः दैट इज नॉट ए पेसिमिस्टिक क्राय इट टेल्स दैट यू आर दैट वन रेयर पर्सन हु हैज चोजन दिस पाथ सो ग्लोरीफाय बाय ग्रोइंग ऑन दिस स्पिरिच्युअल पाथ डोंट गिव अप हाफ वे दिस इज द मीनिंग you know one of the most difficult problems which most of the student suffer in this world and the problem is they do not have self confidence those who do not have self confidence atma vishwas they also do not have parmatma vishwas faith in god either you have faith in the lord or you have faith in yourself one young boy came and asked me he is a swami ji i don't have don't have faith in god i called him come here i spoke in his ear he i also don't have faith in god really i said is really he said how come i said now do you know what is faith faith is acceptance of something which is not known to you you accept your mother and father out of faith isn't it you don't know this is your mother this is your father only out of faith blind faith and faith is always blind now do you know why you don't have faith because you know god no 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 sanjay i don't know i said yes you know you are being modest therefore here bahavah jnan tapasa don't have that imagination that this path is not for me every one of us can and how to do that how to allow that infinite bliss to express through us without creating the blisters is a technique given in this verse that episode will be tomorrow om purnamadaha purnamidam purnaat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ